What's up, YouTube? Boy, back once again with another sport topic. And today we're going to talk some football. Not text football, but kind of text football. Like, not really, but kind of got some Texan players in it. And so the Texans are involved, but not really all about the Houston Texans. Because we're going to talk about Brian Flores and the combination of Deshaun Watson and the two pairing up and meeting up together potentially for the New York Football Giants. And why it makes sense for everybody involved. Both sides, everybody involved, it makes sense for everybody. We're going to talk about we're going to break it down. But before we do that, like I'm going to tell you on the last couple of videos, the goal is to reach 5K, 5,000 subscribers. We reach 5K, I'm doing a special giveaway. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. You want to be a part of it. But the only way to be a part of it is to reach 5K. Then you got to subscribe. That's the only way to be a part of it. The only way to be a part of it is for the channel to get to 5K. So you got to do your best by subscribing and then also sharing it to other people so they can subscribe. Also, hit them links in the description. Follow me on social media. Hit them links in the description. We're doing a lot of special things. Also, a lot of information is going to be dropping. Especially, I, I'm dropping a lot of information throughout Instagram and Twitter. You got the only way to see it is to follow me. Hit them links in the description. Follow me on social media. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Now, let's talk about this breakdown because the New York Giants are obviously in the market because they fired Joe Judge. So they're in the market for a head coach. And also, if I'm not mistaken, I think that their general manager retired. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think their general manager either stepped down, retired, or something like that. So if I'm wrong, uh, please let me know. Because it, it doesn't really change too much, but it is a factor. So, but if, so if I'm wrong, let me know. But I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Giants general manager is gone as well. And the Miami Dolphins let go of head coach Brian Flores. Now, the Houston Texans, we've interviewed them uh, here in Houston. And, you know, Deshaun Watson, the quarterback, is wanted to go to Miami. One of the big reasons is because of Brian Flores. So, there's a lot of talk about it. Wherever Brian Flores goes, there's a good chance of them landing Deshaun Watson, especially since Brian Flores was pounding on the table, reportedly, for Deshaun Watson. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, you know what? The best spot probably would be in New York. Now, I talked about this before about the New York Giants being the trade partner for Deshaun Watson back during the season, but before, before the trade deadline when I was breaking down teams, and I actually said that the Giants probably have the best package for the Texans personally. But we didn't know because Deshaun has to hold no trade clause, and would Deshaun actually, you know, waive his no trade clause? Well, the report, I think Michael Smith reported last week that Deshaun would waive his no trade clause for the New York Giants. And now it just makes even more sense, especially since, you know, the reason why Brian Flores was uh, let go, apparently, uh, in Miami was not because of football reasons, because he actually has a good track record football-wise. I mean, his first season, he was 11-5. Then his second season, he was 10-6 and barely missed the playoffs in this past season. After starting out 1-7, they won the seven-game winning streak, and they were uh, um, eight, of, uh, 8 of 9 of their last nine. And, uh, like went on a seven game winning streak and end up being uh um nine and uh nine and eight to finish this year with a winning record. So the last two years he finished with, finished with a winning record, even though his first year I think he was like either five I think it was five and eleven his rookie year. But his first year head coaching. So it's not by wins because they they won eight of their last nine, including a seven game winning streak. So it's it obviously has nothing to do with the football on the football field. It's actually supposedly a, a reportedly a power struggle between him and the general manager. And I did some more research about uh, Brian Flores and seeing that his even though he started no coaching for New England, but his background really started the how he got into the NFL was being a scout, being an assistant scout, and then being uh, not a head scout but uh, um, some of the some of the scout uh, some of the, with, the, with the scouting division. So. He, uh, the scouting and playing personnel, if I'm not mistaken. So he obviously, plus I said he's the one who was pounding on the table to get to Sean Watson. He wants some type of control via roster, say. At the very least, that's why if the Giants don't have a general manager, that might be key to him going to uh, going to New York. Now, if they do have a general manager, if I'm all absolutely wrong on that front and they actually do have a general manager, I don't really think it changes much. I think is he would still end up going to New York. I still think that that could still be a, a thing as long as he's, even if he gets hired, can I bring in the type of players I want? Now that brings us here to Deshaun Watson. Been a lot of people from the media actually saying Giant fans and Giant people. I know earlier this year, the, the, uh, um, one, of the Giants, uh, one of the newspapers in New York said Deshaun Watson the only person who could save the Giant season now. Um, the Giants are striving for so I know they got uh, Saquon. But he always hurt. It didn't work with Odell. Even though Odell rose up to be a huge star. 
But haven't had a star quarterback. I mean, to be honest, even though Eli won two Super Bowls, outside his two Super Bowl runs, he was completely unsuccessful as a Giants quarterback as far as like win losses, as far as win losses in, in playoff situations. Because like, the only time I think the only time he's actually won playoff games was the two Super Bowl runs. Granted, those were two Super Bowl runs, and he has two Super Bowl MVPs. And I think that Eli deserves to be a Hall of Famer because. He has two Super Bowl championships and two Super Bowl MVPs, so I do deserve think he deserves to be an MVP. But let's be honest, Eli was a star because his last name is Manning and his brother is Peyton and his dad is Archie. Like, like if we want to be honest, if Eli's name was Eli Eilerflus or Eva, Eli, um, I don't know, Eli, uh, Eli, um, uh, uh, Fulton or Eli, no, Eli, uh, Shog. Uh, some just like some weird other name, would Eli even be? Would Eli would even went number one overall in that draft? Would Eli actually would have done anything in the NFL as far as like would he be able to get chance of chance when he lead? Then he's led the in, led the league in interceptions multiple times with like twenty thirty plus not thirty plus but twenty twenty five plus. So would he really continue to get those long stretches and chances if his dad wasn't Archie and his brother wasn't Peyton? I don't know. You know, I actually like Eli, but who knows? The Giants need and have been starving, especially in, the, in, the, in New York. New York City been starving for a star, kind of like us Texas fans been starving for a franchise quarterback. We've had stars. We've had Dre. We've had JJ. We've had Hopkins. We've had Foster. We were starving for a franchise quarterback. New York is starving for a star. It's New York. It's glitz and glamour, just like L.A. and the Lakers. And it, they starving for... For a star, Deshaun Watson could be that star. Obviously, not can be. Deshaun is that type of star. He's a star athlete. Let's break down some of Deshaun's seasons because I'm not gonna talk about his rookie season because he only played seven games. But his first, his, uh, his first four years as a starter, he um, had uh, three uh, uh, 345 completions off of 505 attempts with completion percentage of 68.3, 4,165 yards, averaging 8.2 yards per attempt. Six to, uh, 26 touchdowns, nine interceptions, with a quarterback rating of 103.1. They won 11 games that year. One division won 11 games that year. In 2019, he only played 15 games, so he was 10 and 5 because he, he didn't play the last game of the season. He was 10 and 5. Uh, he, had, he was 333 completions off of 440, uh, 495 attempts. With uh, um, a complete percentage of 67.3, uh, having 3,852 yards, well, um, throwing 7.8 yards per attempt with 26 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and uh, a quarterback rating of 98. Kind of a little deeper production, but that year they did win a playoff game. And was in, uh, went to play one division, won a playoff game against Buffalo, and then you uh, they lost to Kansas City. You know, the whole 24 to nothing debacle. Now, 2020. Play all sixteen games was three hundred. I uh, had um had three hundred and uh three hundred and eighty two completions for five hundred off of five hundred and four four attempts, uh, averaging seventy point two uh averaging se uh, se uh, seventy point two uh, um completion percentage, which was third in the league. It uh, was the third was third in the league uh, behind uh, Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees. Had 4,823 yards with led the NFL. Was uh, 8.9 yards per attempt, which led the NFL. 33 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, which was seven, top of 7th in the NFL. And a quarterback rating of 112.4, which was second behind Aaron Rodgers. Now he didn't play. Obviously, he didn't play last year, this twenty twenty one season, because he wanted to trade. The whole case situation, and we all know he was the fact deactivated for every game this season was on the athlete list. But that's what type of talent that you have. That's the that's the type of talent that you can get with Deshaun Watson. Now, obviously, if you do that, you're going to have some picks are going to, have to be involved. The Giants have the fifth pick in the draft, and they also have the seventh pick in the draft. And I also think that you probably might have to end up giving maybe, uh, maybe a f another future, another future first. So those two picks plus next year's first round pick, which will give you three picks. I know we at one point we were talking about four picks and five picks and six picks and players and all that type of stuff like that. And 
it doesn't matter if you're in the camp of, as far as the Texas fans go, if you're in the camp of, we don't want Deshaun Watson at all. If we do want Deshaun Watson, they need to find a way to make it work. Or in the middle, like, you're good either way. Like, you just, like, if you do get get rid of the sun, you don't want to get screwed. You want to get a good deal. But if if you find a way to keep him, if you find a way to keep him, we cool. Because I got people like like my boy Ray Ray. Shout out to everybody on Soft Sports. My boy Ray Ray off of Soft Sports. He doesn't want no parts of Deshaun Watson. No, want none whatsoever. He doesn't want no parts of Deshaun Watson. He wants him gone. Then you have people who want Deshaun Watson to stay. Like my boy Wink from Soft Sports. We want Deshaun Watson to stay. My boy Darren will want Deshaun Watson to stay. Trill. He going wherever Deshaun goes and he don't really care. And then you got people, I feel like, you know, me, Honcho, Wise. We on the lines of, if you get rid of Deshaun, make sure it's a good deal. But I think if the, if they find a way to make it work because Deshaun Watson is better than Davis Mills and everybody else, we will roll with Deshaun Watson. We have no problem if he go back out there and play. If he wants to play, we'll let him play. We ain't tripping. So you don't no matter which fan you are of those three, at the very least you understand what he's worth as far as the talent. And because of that, you're talking about at the very least, you're talking about those three picks, the uh, fifth pick this year, the four, uh, the fifth pick this year, which, and the seventh pick this year, and then a future first. If I'm Nick. I, I think if that's the deal, I think I'm cool with it. I don't think it has to be anymore. Um, if I'm Nick, I would try to maybe try to see if I can squeeze a person out of the deal. I would like them to go after uh, um, Jabril Peppers. I would like them to try to squeeze Jabril Peppers into the deal. Um, especially what I would want to do with those draft assets via this draft. As far as targeting the secondary, I would actually like to bring Jabril Peppers into the uh into that into that equation as well. I think I think it will help out. But I think for everybody involved, I think hiring Brian Flores is the best case best case situation for everybody involved because I think if the Giants hire Brian Flores, what that right there what that right there does is basically puts them because he's been pounding the table to get to Sean Watson. If they do hire Brian Flores, especially since he has player personnel and scouting the background that he has those type of that, that type of background, that's how he started off in the NFL. He wants some similar powers, especially since that was supposed to be the power struggle he had in Miami. He would want some of that same similar power. Or he would want some type of control or some type of say-so. And if he does that, I think he has no problem. Get rid of them picks. Give me Deshaun Watson. Get, get rid of them picks. And John fans, I know y'all probably out there, we don't want to give up those picks for Deshaun Watson. Do you understand you live in New York? You're in New York City. If Deshaun Watson's coming to New York, Y'all can be able to get any free agent that y'all want. Any any free agent that y'all want, y'all be able to get like this. Y'all in New York. It's New York, New York. Everybody, especially people who want to build a brand. This New York, New York, they can come build their brand. And they have a talent like Deshaun Watson, which is easily a top five quarterback right now. You plug him in, he's a top five quarterback right now. My personal opinion, I think he's the second best quarterback behind Patrick Mahomes. Even though my boy Joe Burrow kind of got something to say about that right now. But we knew we're not talking about that right now because Joe, Joe's a goat. But what, what I'm saying is, and I'm not counting Brady or Rodgers. Like, they, they, they're they grandfather and they, they exclude from the conversation. But what I'm saying is, because of that, you'll be able to get any anybody you want. So you don't even need the draft capital. You don't need the high draft picks. You can do without getting them high draft pick. Especially if Deshaun does end up playing in this 2022 season, the future first round pick that y'all give us is going to be somewhere in the 20s, mid to late 20s. It's not going to be an early pick. It's not going to be a top 5, top 10, top 15 pick. It's going to be, I say, like between 22 and uh, 28, somewhere in that ball frame. It's going to be in the mid to high 20s. Not in the low 20s. I don't even think 2022 20, is probably going to be too low. So, because well, I guess mid would be 25. So, yeah. It's going to be in the 24, 25. So, it's, it's going to be in the high. It's going to be in the mid to high 20s. If Deshaun Watts play, I mean, you got uh, 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 Galladay. You got uh, uh, Shepard. Like, you got, uh, you have offensive skills. Then you play in the NFC East where the Eagles back kind of, like, they ain't really back door into, uh, back door in, but the Eagles, for the most part, all season long, 
was in a bad spot as far as like like they, they were in the top half of the draft. They were in the ten and eleven range, and then they jumped and got to the playoffs. The uh, uh, Washington football team with Tyler Haneke was in the playoff mix. Only team that really was in the playoff mix in y'all division was y'all, obviously because Dallas won the division. But that's a e that's a winnable division. You see how the Cowboys implode? That's an easy winnable division, kind of similar to the AFC South in the 2010s, from like from like 2010 until 2017. How how bad the AFC South was? How the Texans and the Colts were able to win the division easily because of how bad the rest of the division was up until Tennessee went on this run. And now Tennessee and the Colts were a viable team, and for a little stretch, it, we we won two division titles while those two teams were good because we both the times we won division titles and uh, with Deshaun in, in 17, 18, both the Colts and the Titans went to the playoffs. Actually, both the Colts and the Titans went to the playoffs last year. And also in 17, the year the Texans didn't win the playoffs, the Jags and the Titans went to the playoffs. So, yeah, so 17, 18, 19, and 20. For like four years outside this year, the AFC South has sent, four, has sent two teams into the playoffs for uh, in the last four years. And it was all different teams. It was never just the same two. Four, it was just never the same two teams. It was always a different combination of teams. Jags, Titans. Colts, uh, Texans, Colts, Texans, Titans, Titans, Colts. So, always a mixture in, in those four years. So, it shows you the, the, uh, how the, the, the division has gotten better. That's not really the case with the NFC East. I can see the NFC East being on the, even though Dallas has talent and Philly just made the playoffs, do y'all really believe in Justin uh, uh, and Jalen Hurts? Washington has a solid defense, but they don't have the quarterback. Washington might be trying to get in this mix as well for for the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. I don't know if Deshaun's willing to go to Washington or not, but they should be able to get into the mix as well. But I definitely think he will go to the Giants. I do think the Giants will be able to get free agents, so giving them draft capital is not anything like or oh, um, bad. And I think if you hire Brian Flores, uh, especially the position that y'all in, that will make that will pay huge dividends. It works for the Texans, especially me. You get them out the conference. He's not in the AFC. He's not in the AFC South. We ain't got to see him twice a year. We ain't got to see him every three years. We ain't got to see him every other year. We ain't got to see him in the playoffs. We have to see him once every four years. And then for some um, some special reason, somehow we both make it to the Super Bowl, I'm good with that. Not to mention, not to mention this. And this is another thing, too, the, the, the Giants that you really need to sink in. The NFL's had three black quarterbacks win Super Bowls. The Williams, um, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. The NFL has had two black coaches win a Super Bowl. Tony Dungy, Mike Tomlin's won two. The NFL has never had a combination of a black quarterback and a black head coach win the Super Bowl. The Giants could be that team. The Giants could be that team to be the first team in NFL history with a black quarterback and a black head coach winning the Super Bowl. Think about the headlines. Just think about, just think about all the headlines that the New York City could, could, could deal with. The New York football Giants. Think about that. It benefits everybody involved. It benefits the Texans, get them out the division, get them out the conference, and it's the easiest way to get assets because you give us two first round picks this year, which are two top ten picks, and then also potential first round picks next year. And somehow if we able to squeeze a player if it is your real purpose. If it happened to be Saquon, I'll take Saquon. To be honest, I would. I, I mean, I would not in the Deshaun, not in the uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, David Johnson type trade. But if you tell me the, the Giants give me three first round picks and then throw in Saquon because they tied Saquon because of injury history, I have no problem with trying to roll Saquon out one more one more time. I know y'all don't want to pay Saquon, so I have no problem with them rolling Saquon Barkley out in that trade. As long as he's not like the big part of the trade, not oh you get Saquon, you only get one first round pick. No, nah. nah, then no. But if it's you get the first round picks and you throw in Saquon just to also to make the money move. I ain't tripping. I would prefer to see. I would prefer to get Jabril Peppers in that situation. But if it's Saquon, I ain't tripping. But um, get them out of the division. Get those type of assets. New York, you get your head coach. And then you get your superstar quarterback. They could probably instantly, not probably, but will instantly make y'all a viable option, a viable contender in the NFC East and a free agent target. Because y'all in New York City, you have 
a coach who wins football games. He's won in Miami. I mean, he hasn't won anything significant, but he won games. It wasn't like he was just a, a, a losing ass coach. He's won games, and also you have superstar quarterback who is just biting at the bit, chomping at the bit to be an MVP type of player. Like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell. Get more videos. I holla.